The money has been pledged to support them, but so far there are nowhere near enough soldiers. Despite cash promises from Europe and America, the African Union summit has failed to raise enough troops to keep the peace, such peace as it is, in Somalia and sustain its traditional federal government. Channel 4 News has obtained an exclusive document revealing America's role in the planning and execution of last month's Ethiopian invasion of Somalia. It reveals the U.S. having to do close business with a government whose human rights record has so recently been condemned. As Jon Snow discovered, it's a document no one was very keen to discuss at the African Union summit in Addis Ababa today. Ethiopia is a deeply religious country. Obedience to a mainly Coptic Christian god has transcended politics down the ages. Haile Selassie combined both Godhead and Emperor, and even the Soviet-backed communist era never managed to subvert godliness. In today's hoped-for democratic era, this very Tuesday morning, the masses were still celebrating the angel Oriel. As Ethiopia's famously athletic youth run races across the terraces of the main square, this God-fearing has left a residue of autocratic habits. Police water cannon lurk at the far end of the square where the government shot protesters after deeply contested election results 18 months ago. But this energetic nation also sports a well-trained army. And when Islamic fundamentalists finally seized power in next door Somalia, this was the resource America turned to. The American embassy is perched beside a dual carriageway high above the square. Channel 4 News has learned that behind these green barricades, six months ago, the blueprint for a very American-supported Ethiopian invasion of Somalia was hatched. We have obtained a UN record of a meeting in which the U.S. commander of the fleet off Somalia, Rear Admiral Richard Hunt, the U.S. Assistant Secretary for Africa, Jendai Frazier, discussed together key scenarios. The worst-case scenario reveals if there were a radical Islamist takeover of Somalia, the U.S. would not allow it. Secondly, in the event of an Ethiopian rapid in-and-out intervention, the U.S. would rally with Ethiopia if the jihadists took over. The aim would be to safeguard the transitional government at that time holed up in the provincial town of Baidoa. The American Assistant Secretary is recorded as cautioning it would be a mistake for the international community to condemn such an invasion. The senior UN official concludes in this document that any Ethiopian action in Somalia would have Washington's blessing. The American Assistant Secretary, Jendai Frazier, happens to be in Addis for the African Union summit. I asked her how long the Ethiopian invasion had been an option. I don't think it was an option at all. I think Ethiopia was trying to support the transitional federal government. But we've seen a UN document detailing a meeting at which you were present um, in which the capacity of Ethiopia to do what they did was seriously questioned. Well, I think, again, if you assume that the Ethiopian forces would be bogged down in a real fight, um, then they might not have had the logistical capability to sustain their forces. And if that had happened, would America have provided the, the backup? Well, we weren't planning to be engaged in any military action in Somalia. And so, no, I can't imagine that we would have, um, you know, the, to sort of talk about scenarios that didn't occur um, is difficult. I, you know, it's, it's, it's hypothetical. In a, in a sense, you'd have to green light it, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd have to know if it's going to happen. No, no, actually. Um, we knew that the uh, Council of Islamic Courts were continuing to uh, move aggressively towards the transitional federal government. Yeah, but you had fleets at sea, you had people in the air, you had capacity. America's forces are deployed globally. I mean, we can move fast. And I think that's a lesson for everybody. There are well over a million Somalis exiled inside Ethiopia. I spent time in the Somali suburbs of Addis. I found very little opposition to the Ethiopian invasion beyond those who claimed that Ethiopia had used it to smash other resistance movements on the shared border. The transitional federal government of Somalia is currently in a hotel room in Addis Ababa, almost all of them fresh from exile in Britain. They intend to take over as they are. When I met the new Somali president, he was counting on his fingers the numbers of troops pledged by African Union nations for peacekeeping.
you did this with Ethiopia, but also the Americans have been very much. Well, so, this somehow country. they helped us. <laughs> How did they help you? <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> the United States Council. They gave him the green light. Yes. Uh -huh. But with the Ethiopians already beginning their withdrawal from Mogadishu, even America admits there is a vast amount to do to secure the new government inside a country that has not been a functioning state for more than a decade and a half. And the risks this Christian-dominated state has taken in deposing a fundamentalist Islamic force in Somalia have unknown implications. Both African Union willpower and American strategy are likely to be sorely tested in the coming weeks. Well, now, the United States has, over the past 18 months, condemned Ethiopia for killings, detentions, torture, following the disputed results of the elections. The incumbent Prime Minister, Mele Zanawi, claimed victory, greeted by some considerable outrage from both opposition and human rights groups. Jon Snow sat down with him in Addis Ababa today to discuss both human rights and the invasion of Somalia. And he asked him whether America had given him the green light to invade, as the document this programme saw suggests. We didn't need their green light and they didn't ask for their green light. We were, we were, we were protecting our own security. And it's, it's the right of every nation in the world to protect its, uh, its security according to international law. But it would have been awkward if they had not agreed with it. There are many things that the United States does not agree with what we do. There are many instances where it doesn't agree with what we do. Uh, we obviously, as friends, uh, tell them what uh, we're trying to do try to explain things to them. If they agree, fine. If they don't agree, then uh, if we feel it's very important for our own uh, uh, national interest, we go ahead and do it. But obviously, in the f in, given that they're going to give money to a force which is going to do the peacekeeping, they must approve, basically, of the action you took. What I'm saying is that we did not seek or get a green light from the United States. Otherwise, they've been very helpful. They've been very helpful in terms of diplomatic support. They've been very helpful in terms of sharing of intelligence with our uh, military forces. Uh, so on the whole, they have been very helpful. Uh, we have no complaints there. If you look at the three theatres where the United States is involved, Afghanistan, Iraq, the Horn of Africa, this looks a more subtle, more discreet, more diplomatic uh, role that the United States have played. Yes, uh, I think uh, in, in the Horn of Africa, they, they have been supportive. Uh, of efforts, local efforts, rather than directive. Nevertheless, it is a risky business, isn't it? I mean, there are very strong feelings between Somalia and Ethiopia over the ages. That's a myth that uh, I hope has been uh, fully exploded uh, by uh, our intervention. Uh, we did not face any hostility uh, from amongst the ordinary Somalis, in spite of the fact that we are a foreign, foreign army uh, moving in their own country. Uh, nevertheless, we feel we have been welcomed. Now, obviously, there are exceptions here and there, but the overwhelming majority of Somalis were very welcoming and very brotherly. Nevertheless, I mean, you have been regarded as a very, very successful leader who has achieved many of the benchmarks of development for Ethiopia that have uh, never been reached before. But since that point, it's been blighted to some extent by what's happened on the human rights front. I agree that um, the post-election trauma that we faced was indeed a trauma. Uh, people died, regrettably, uh, and, and that has clearly tarnished the image of this country. And the image of again? Uh, I hope we have learned our lessons, and I believe we have learned our lessons. But organizations like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International have been very critical indeed and, and say that really the position has not really improved since then. If Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have any problem with uh, people accused of serious crimes going to court and having their day in an independent court, open court, then there's nothing we can do about it. I, I will not deny the fact that this is an emerging democracy. Now, if you count the emergence of democracy in the UK from the time when the Magna Carta was sorted out, it's centuries. Now, it's not going to take us centuries. We can do m much better and quick, much fa move much quicker. But this is work in progress, and therefore it has its own imperfections. 
Ethiopian Prime Minister Meles Zenawi speaking to Jon Snow.